Hello FPL managers, today we've got the team selection reveal for game week 2. In today's video we have a look over at how we got on in game week 1 and look ahead to some changes that we've made to the squad coming into the next game week. If you guys want to get the extra edge this FPL season then click the top link in the description to get yourself 65% off Fantasy Football Fix Premium and also get yourselves a free strategy guide. So just before we get into the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel as we're trying to hit 4k subs by game week 5. Also, click that notification bell so guys don't miss any future uploads, and with that being said, let's get into the video. So having a look at how the team got on, starting off in goals with Robert Sanchez. He did blank with 2 points in game week 1, as Burnley did put a goal past Brighton in Brighton's 2-1 win at Turf Moor. Burnley's goal was a bit dubious as there was potentially a push on the keeper and I was a bit disappointed to see the goal not disallowed, but that's okay, we'll take the blanking goals, we move on. Alexander Arnold got us 6 points in defence as Liverpool got a clinch against Norwich in their 3-0 win, which was nice to see considering the other defensive scores. Alexander Arnold was slightly unlucky not to get an attack in return, but will still take the 6 points. Luke Shaw only managed 1 point against Leeds United as Leeds did score a long range goal, which was slightly unlucky that United didn't get a clean sheet, but then later on Luke Shaw also got a yellow card as well which is disappointing to see, having the minus point scored there. Sue Falker only managed 1 point as well as West Ham surprisingly considered 2 goals to Newcastle in a very eventful game. Sufal had some very nice underlying numbers for that game, as he did attempt more assists than any other defender on the pitch, and was very unlucky not to assist Antonio as he hit the post from a close range header. Moving on, Veltman got 0 points as he could not get on the pitch for Brighton as he did lack match fitness, which did see Josh Brownhill come off the bench to score 1 point for us. It was a bit disappointing to see Veltman not play. Moving on to the midfielders, Mahrez could only manage 2 points as he blanked against Tottenham. He did have a decent chance to score though as he slipped over right before hitting a volley in the box, but we will move on there. Harvey Barnes blanked against Wolves as he only managed 3 points as the midfield woes continued as he didn't really get too many chances to score against the Wolves. Salah got me 34 points on captaincy as he had 17 doubled by getting himself 2 assists and a goal and his great game in one form continues. It was good to see him get returns because there were many other players that did lack in getting attacking returns for us this week so he did kind of save our game week. And moving on to the 4th midfielder slot, which did turn out to be a huge blunder, as Mane could only manage 3 points as we did go for him over Bruno Fernandes, which massively backfired. In hindsight, this decision was not worthwhile to make, as we should have gone with the safe option in Bruno Fernandes, who did get a hat-trick recording 20 points, compared to Mane's just 3. This obviously cost us a lot of points throughout this game, so that was very disappointing there, but amongst the forwards we had returns from both Ings and Antonio, as Ings got himself a late penalty goal which was slightly lucky as he didn't really have too many chances throughout the game, and Antonio got himself 13 points in a very eventful match against Newcastle, as he got himself 2 assists, 1 goal and 1 penalty miss as well. He was also able to get himself 3 bonus points as well which was nice to see. And on the bench, Begovic didn't play, Veltman did go into that first bench slot, and we had Amati on the second bench slot instead of Josh Brownhill, which was disappointing as Amati got me 6 points and Obafemi didn't play. So in terms of transfers and finance, we did have £100 million in the squad value, and did have one free transfer coming into game week 2. Our overall points for this week was 73, which was very disappointing. It would have been a lot higher if we'd have Bruno Fernandes, so that was the main reason why we did so poorly. And our overall rank is just inside 3 million. So before we jump into the Game Week 2 team, let's have a look at some of our transfer plans. We have seen Sadio Mane being transferred out for Bruno Fernandes, which is I'm assuming no surprise to you guys, as Bruno Fernandes did record the most points for Game Week 1 at getting himself a hat-trick. And Sadio Mane with just a 4.1% ownership, doesn't look like he can compete with the points outlet of Bruno Fernandes, who is one of the top end players in the game. And we did bring in Fernandes at 12 million pounds before he saw the price rise to 12.1 million, as if we couldn't bring in Fernandes before his price rise, I don't think we would have been able to afford him. So with Bruno Fernandes coming off a huge score in game week 1 and his next 3 fixtures looking quite nice in Southampton, Wolves and Newcastle, he is definitely a strong transfer in. So now having a look at how the team lines up for game week 2, in goals we once again have gone with Robert Sanchez as he faces Watford at home which is looking like a nice fixture. Watford did score 3 past Aston Villa last week but Brighton do have a fairly solid defence and were unlucky to concede to Burnley. So at 4.5 million pounds, Sanchez does continue to be good value, so there's no need for any changes there. Moving on to the defenders, it is the same starting back four as we have gone with Alexander Arnold coming in against Burnley at home this week. 
This is looking like another promising fixture for a Liverpool clean sheet and hopefully some attacking returns for Alexander-Arnold as I feel like he is pushing for his first goal or assist of the season. Luke Shaw is the another defender to start this week. I have seen a lot of managers transfer him out as he did only record one point in game week one, but I definitely think everyone should be holding on to Luke Shaw as this week he faces Southampton. As I touched on before, United were very unlucky not to get a clean sheet and Luke Shaw had some decent underlying numbers, getting himself one shot and two attempted assists. So with this combination of defensive solidarity and attacking output, I do think he'll be a nice option, especially over the next three weeks. Moving on, Vladimir Sufal starts once again in the team, despite playing Leicester at home, which is a fairly tricky fixture. The 5 million pound defender did have some very nice underlying stats in terms of assists last week, and I do think it's just a matter of time before he can get himself his first attacking return. Obviously, West Ham's defence was a bit leaky against Newcastle, so I'm not holding too much promise in terms of defensive returns for Sofal this week, despite Leicester only scoring one goal past Wolves. And to cap off the defence, it is Veltman coming in at 4.5 million. Obviously, he did lack match fitness last week and couldn't get a start for Brighton, but I am hoping he can return to full fitness for Gammy 2, as that fixture against Watford at home is looking nice from a defensive standpoint. I do think if Veltman plays, he will be playing in left centre back, but regardless, he does offer some attacking potential, but he is mainly in there for his defensive solidarity and nice price of 4.5 million. Now moving on to the players in the middle of the park, starting off with Riyad Mahrez. Mahrez is coming off a blank in game week 1, but he is looking to be a great option for game week 2, as Man City face Norwich at home. This is the main reason why I've had Mahrez in my team, as I am hoping he can get some very nice returns against Norwich in this game week, as Manchester City, I would expect, would put around 4-5 to five goals past them. Mahrez was a bit quiet against the Spurs, and he was being left with lots of space, but he just couldn't get as many touches as he would have liked. He did have a nice chance in the box, which he put wide, so I am hoping some nice attacking output for him in game week two. Moving on, Harvey Barnes stays in the squad, coming in at 7 million. Obviously, there are a couple of nice options that did perform well around his price tag in game week one, but I am trusting him to potentially do some against West Ham. The last time Leicester and West Ham did play, it was a very high scoring game. I do believe there was over five goals in that one, so I am having some more of the same. Harvey Barnes was another one that was quiet in game week one, but we do know how good he is on the counter attack, and I do think he does flourish in that one striker formation that Leicester are running at the moment. Moving on, it is no surprise to see Salah on the captaincy once again, as he did perform very well for me last week, getting 17 points doubled to 34. With this fixture against Burnley at home in game week 1, I definitely think it's a great opportunity for him to extend his goal scoring tally, as he was looking very lethal against Norwich. Salah was obviously very impressive last year for Liverpool, being one of the top scoring players in the middle of the park, and at 12.5 million pounds, he is definitely a lock for the captaincy. And to cap off the midfielder is Bruno Fernandes, who is the new transfer in, who is now priced at 12.1 million. Obviously, it was a huge mistake not having him in game week 1, but I am feeling a lot more safer and confident having him in the squad for game week 2, instead of going for the double up on Liverpool attack. After watching game week 1 especially, I do think it is essential to have a Manchester United attacker, and I definitely think Bruno Fernandes is the best option amongst their attacking assets. This fixture against Southampton was one that was very eventful last year for United, as I did remember them putting 9 past Southampton in an absolute thrashing. Obviously, I'm not expecting this to be replicated, but I am hoping for Fernandes to continue in his scoring ways, or at least getting an attacking return, as he did have some very nice underlying numbers against Leeds. Speaking of, Bruno Fernandes did have the highest extra on the pitch in game week 1, which was sitting at 0.75 as he scored 3 goals with just 4 shots. He also had an XA of 0.1, recorded 3 shots on target and 3 attempted assists as well, so he was definitely getting very involved amongst the United attackers. So as I've touched on before, I do feel a lot more confident with Fernandes in the team, as I am hoping he can continue his scoring ways in the upcoming weeks. And moving on to the forwards up top, we have stuck with Danny Ings once again, despite being slightly underwhelming in game week 1. Obviously at 8 million pounds, there were a lot of other strikers that did perform very well in the first game week, such as the likes of Richarlison, calvert Lewin, and many more. Obviously, Ings' underlying numbers were nowhere near as good as the other strikers, but I'm just guessing that he had an off week, and hopefully he can return to his scoring ways in game week 2, as Newcastle did concede 4 goals in game week 1 against West Ham. After that, he also faces Brentford at home as well, so I definitely do think he's a nice short-term option. And moving on to Ings' strike partner in Mikel Antonio, he was quite the opposite of Danny Ings, as Antonio did record the highest XG out of any player in game week 1. This does continue from his very nice XG last year, as he did have the highest XG per 90 out of any player last year at 0.64 and this has continued this season as his xg per 90 is currently sitting at 1.55 
This is obviously due to the fact that he did take a penalty and missed a relatively open goal, plus had a couple of other chances as well. But I do think since he is the focal point of that West Ham attack, he is getting plenty of service from his teammates and getting plenty of chances to score. So even though he's playing Leicester at home in game week 2, it is slightly a tricky fixture, but the fixture between West Ham and Leicester was quite high scoring last time as I did touch on, and Leicester did look less than convincing defensively against the Wolves, as Wolves should have scored a couple of goals. So that means this squad value is now coming in at £100.1 million, and we currently have a 0, 0.0 in the bank. On the bench, we have gone with Begovic, Amati, Brownhill, and Obafemi, with Amati prioritised that first bench option, as I don't want to make the same mistake again if he does get a clean sheet having him second bench. So that's what we've got for today for the FPL Game Week 2 team selection. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel as we're trying to hit 4k subs by Game Week 5. Also, click that notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads and leave a comment of what you guys thought of this video and how your team is lining up for the next game week. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.